Welcome once again to Action for Animals. You know, we have covered a lot of animals on this program. All have interacted with us in some way, but there is an animal which many do not realize is a living thing. They only see the protective rock casing and they don't realize it's really made up of thousands of microscopic creatures. I'm talking about none other and coral and it protects our beaches and our homes along the coasts and the marine life as well around it and today how can we be a part of its preservation and its conservation and my guest today is Ajani Miller and Ajani is a fascinating individual because he's a diving instructor he's a free diver we want to find out what that is a little later on <laughs> And he's also a boat captain. And Gail got an opportunity to travel with, with, with Ajani on our beautiful waters recently. And let's see what she found out. So John Miller, it's nice to be with you on the Barbados Blue Crew. Good to have you. Thank you for having us. Um, so I know that you've got some people out swimming and snorkeling and diving, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But um, I know that there's something that you're really passionate about, mm -hmm. which your team is really passionate about, oh, yeah. and that is coral reef restoration. Mm -hmm. It's something that we don't talk about much when we talk about animal welfare, marine welfare, but the coral is equally as important. So can you tell us a little bit about the restoration work that Barbados Blue is currently doing? Well, Barbados Blue specifically, um, we teach coral reef first aid. It's a course under PADI. Any open water diver, if you're certified, you can come. And we teach you. So you do a little book work, and then we put, take you on the boat. We take you over to one of our marine parks on the west coast where we have our A-frames. And those A-frames are home to staghorn coral, which we put on. Staghorn coral is very susceptible to you know, climate change, and it's very easily damaged by boats and anchors and you know, common diver kicking their fins. Okay. So because it is endangered, we try and just, we, we take the fragments from live coral in the wild, put it on the A-frames. We come back in later on and we replant it back onto the reef. So even in the marine park right here, recently we took coral from the west coast yeah. a couple months ago and brought it here. So if you dive, if you were to dive right now, you would see some clusters of staghorn coral along the reef. Very small amounts, but they're growing and they're still alive. Right. That so came over from the West Coast. Can you tell us, because a lot of people don't understand what coral actually is, mm -hmm. so can you explain what coral is? Well, coral, just for those who don't know, coral is marine invertebrates. They are made out of thousands of tiny animals called polyps. Now, together, corals, they form a reef, and that reef protects all this, all this coastline. The reef stops it from the erosion. When storms or hurricane season comes around, if, they don't, if you don't have coral reefs <laughs> protecting you, I mean, a lot of these buildings will be underwater. Okay then, right. so they're really, really critical. Oh, yes. And what type of life, what kind of marine life lives around coral? Oh, I can't even name all. You will find thousands of tiny reef fish in a nice, healthy environment. Yeah. Reef fish will be all over, and it's a big food web. So if you have reef fish, if you think of it, animals that would eat those animals on different levels in the food web, you have a very well, a very good ecosystem in a healthy coral reef system. And you were saying um, earlier that you are an environmental scientist. Yes. So right, specifically, yes. what do you? What does that mean? Well, my dad, my my dad did. My dad was a marine biologist, uh -huh. and I refused to do what he did just to be stubborn. <laughs> uh, so I did environmental science, and it was really it was fun. It was interesting. I loved it. Um, and later on, I'm going to focus more on the marine side of it. But I mean, I've been in the water my whole life, so it just came natural. I mean, I'm here every day. I heard when you were speaking to the people that were diving uh -huh. that you feed the turtles fish. Uh -huh. Sorry. I understand people do feed them different things. Uh -huh. So really, in an ideal world, as part of conservation for the turtles, mm -hmm. what should 
be, what should we be doing in the water when we see them? When we see fish, I mean, you should leave them alone. You should let them be. So every time I brief, you would have heard, every time I tell the snorkels what to do, I say, try and don't touch them. Yeah. Sometimes the turtle may come up and it may come on you and you brush them. So be it. Okay. But I mean, don't grab them. Don't annoy them. Don't do anything like that. So just let them be. We feed them fish. The green turtles, so we feed them fish. Yeah. I hope Carol will agree with me, <laughs> but I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing to feed them fish because it's protein, but if left alone, like if you go into seabeds, you'll see them eating seagrass. Um, hawksbill turtles and other turtles, they would eat jellyfish. Um, but we feed them fish. I don't think it does any damage, but in the left alone, they won't be eating fish. What a beautiful day to be on the water. I am envious. Well, we're going to continue with their trip after the break. On Action for Animals, we team up with the animal advocacy group Action for Animals Barbados. And we seek to enlighten, to educate, to inform, and to let you know the importance of the proper care for our animals. Today, another type of animal, but a living animal nonetheless, coral. Let's continue our boat trip and find out about even more of the marine life that is around our shores. Well, what about like um, getting locals involved? I know we have tourists that love to come visit Barbados for our beautiful waters, uh -huh. but how can we get more tourists to come on these kind of excursions and enjoy? Part. I have friends who have been growing up with me since I was in Nick. Um, before secondary school and they've come out and they didn't even know Carla Bay exists. Right. Um, I brought some friends out here the other day and they were like, I didn't even know shipwrecks was here. Right out, right in front of the Prime Minister's yeah, office. I mean, yeah. they, a lot of them don't know it exists. Uh, I hear a lot of them say the sea don't have a back door, still to this day. Yes. <laughs> um, but no, there's some of them just can't swim or they're scared of the water for whatever reason, but we live around water. Yeah, we're islands. Tourists come from thousands of miles away just to come here, just, just to, to come. enjoy that enjoy the water so I mean it's, it's difficult to get them involved but I love to see my locals coming into the yeah. dive shop saying I want to learn today you are learning today if I heard yeah I am come. I'm really looking forward exactly. to it I love it I love it <laughs> yeah I, can't know, wait. Need, I love to get our locals involved yeah. in it. I was thinking as well with school children you know mm -hmm. that they could even if they don't go into the water straight away they can certainly come on the boat mm -hmm. and get a feel of the movement mm -hmm. how it feels mm -hmm. and then they can graduate eventually maybe even do a little bit of snorkeling mm -hmm. things no like that, that happens all yeah that happens a lot um there are several groups in barbados especially that will like take children from schools and they'll bring them here and they ask us to help and we we're all on we're all here we all come yeah. and bring the boats and they'll come on the boat even if they don't want to snorkel, come for a boat ride, see the fish from the boat, you know, yeah. see what you're missing out on because they might never do it again. Or if they come, they might see it and say, oh, I want to do this more. Yeah, I think in, in the UK, growing up, uh, in going to school, we had to learn to swim. It was part of our uh, curriculum. So from primary school, okay. all children, you know, you have to go once a week, often complaining mm -hmm. because it's yes. freezing yes. cold. Yes. But I think that that is really important. Um, it gives children a sense of confidence. Mm -hmm. And also as well, like you say, they can, they can kind of like, if they're out swimming with their friends, mm -hmm. they can enjoy the water a lot more Safe. and feel safer. Mm -hmm. you know, when I was in primary school, it was the same thing. And I didn't even, because I went to a private school and I didn't even know public schools didn't do it. You know, you're not thinking that at an age. Yeah. But when you reach secondary school and at Comber Mirror, I was you hearing, realize. yeah, like they don't know how to swim. They never did any swimming in school. And I never really thought about it that I was, I, it's just the school I went to that did it. But I think all schools should, you know, Teach. swimming is a very important part. <laughs> Yeah. In life, I think I think everybody should, especially in Barbados. Yeah, because we're an island. <laughs> I mean, we're beautiful. Water is clear. I think you should. Yeah. yeah. So going back to the coral, mm -hmm. um, what other types of marine life do we have in our in our shallows? I would say. To name, and to, I, mean, you mentioned, to I heard you mention a stingray. We have stingrays. You mean right here and in this spot? Yeah. Well, I mean this spot because. We drop fish and you know, stingrays will come over, eagle rays will come over. There is a difference, Barbados. Mm -hmm. um, but turtles, you have flying gunards, you have flounders, you have batfish, you, you have so much fish right here. Right. And this isn't even a coral reef, this is just sand. Beautiful. And in this sand patch, you will find so much different life simply because it's protected. it's a protected area. 
Okay then. And what about the humpback whales? I've seen them once. Okay. They've come in, in during summer, you mm -hmm. can dive right here and you hear them like they're right next to you. They're so loud you can hear them like they're right here, but I've never I haven't seen one for years. So is, it the, is that the echo? What's it what's the name of it? Echo sonar? Um sonar. 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 So like that's what travels. I use. I hope, I hope that's the right word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what travels um, mm -hmm. underwater. That's them communicating. So you can hear them communicating. We have different pitches, different sounds. Yeah. Um, and if you go on the south coast once in a while, you will see them jumping up in the um, jumping up in summer, jumping up um, on the south coast. Yeah. And what time of year do they come typically? You said the summer. So is it around May? Yes. June, 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 June July ish is when I started to hear them. Uh, and often they come up around the north as well. Yes, yes. I've had really many friends on fishing boats in the north, like um, <laughs> right there on their boat, it comes up right next to them and they're just chilling out. Johnny said that he has spent most of his life in the water and we can understand why because his father is a marine biologist but let's chat with a Johnny all right and and find out just what drove him to spend his life in the ocean welcome a Johnny thank you for having me so You've been around for a long time, and most of that spent in, in the, the ocean, mm -hmm. in the water. Mm -hmm. um, what what drove you to that? As you said, my father. There's there's a picture I, I thought of when you said it. With there's a me. I'm, I could barely walk, but it's just me in the air being thrown off the boat, and him doing this, and what? I'm just falling in the water, and everybody's looking down at me, and I just I remember the time vaguely. It's just that's I was just fun. I mean, I've always just been attached to water. I love being in it. Um, and then when you get the chance to just dive and go under there and you hear the sounds and you see everything, you see different colors, things you don't see on land, it's hard not to get addicted. You know, they've said that they've explored space mm -hmm. more than they've explored mm -hmm. the ocean's mm -hmm. depth. It's hard to believe. Yeah. Yes. What's the deepest you've ever been? Diving. I should, probably shouldn't admit it. A hundred and... <gasps> 40 feet, the 30 feet, 40 what? feet. Yeah. Okay, and because we are watching in awe from, from land, uh -huh. terra firma, uh -huh. water, Why? Okay. Wa water pressure, uh -huh. um, strange creatures mm -hmm. under that water that mm -hmm. we, we, we don't know about. They don't talk to us, they just uh -huh. interact and sometimes uh -huh. not in a positive way. Uh -huh. So what's it like when you enter that? When you, okay. Let's go with the diving with a suit and mask and mm -hmm. everything first. Mm -hmm. Then we'll talk about the free diving. Mm -hmm. When you enter that water, mm -hmm. what do you see? What do you hear? It is the most peaceful time you will have for your day. For that 45 minute dive, it's, the most, it's nobody can talk to you. Your phone can't ring. Nobody can, wants, anyone who wants your attention has to wait. You can't hear anything but bubbles. You can't, the fish don't talk to you. They just come, they say hi, they leave. Turtles pass, they leave. I mean, it's the most peaceful time you will have, just underwater, in Barbados Sea especially. And it's clear. And it's clear. Most All days, right. very clear. And the coral, mm -hmm. what, what does it look like up close? It's, it's, I remember when I was younger, it was beautiful. Like, I'm not old, I'm, I'm 25, I'm not that old, but I remember when I started, the difference from then to the difference now, it's drastic in terms of the things you see. You used to go out there every day and know, okay, I might see a barracuda. I might see this, I might see that. And now it's not so sure. Because, oh. I mean, humans have buried Bajans like their fish. So a lot of them have been killed or whatever. But the coral, obviously, over the years, global impact. Some have died, but the beauty is still there. Mm -hmm. Like, you dive there, you're still like, wow, look at this. And then you see how nature takes over and it. They build the coral, the coral reef will build back up. Um, but this has taken, like millions of years mm -hmm. to get to the point to where get are. to the point where they are mm -hmm. and then we just yeah. managed to do overnight. it in decades yeah. sometimes as you say yeah. overnight that's unfortunate no, i mean yeah one anchor dropped in the wrong place could damage a piece of coral that took hundreds of years to get to it you know so yeah 
Human interaction is a problem. What is a paddy course? I know that you, you, you do that as so well. So paddy is like the umbrella and a lot of dive shops are under that umbrella. So Barbados Blue is just one of um, several in the world paddy dive, paddy dive resorts. So paddy is like they set the standards, they set the courses. So the basic course, paddy open water diver. And then you can go up, you can go up, you can go all the way to dive master, which is the first um, of the teaching certifications and then you can go up to an instructor where I am and then there's different specialties you can teach all the way up to course director which I'm not going to get into but yeah they're just different levels you can go into I see and 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 you all offer that yeah okay so this free diving mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not anything to do with funds it's it's um so it's not free in terms of money but no. it's um, <laughs> <laughs> um no. so what's free diving um free diving is so scuba diving you have your tank you have regulator, you have everything, you have your wetsuit if you want to wear a wetsuit, mask, whatever. It's easy. Scuba diving is the easy part. I remember when I was taught, I went to actually to learn to free dive and the guy said, oh, scuba diving is easy. We don't, because it is, you look, go underwater, you breathe. Free diving tests you mentally, like you have to get your breathing right. And it's just on one breath, how deep can you go? So you can do it for competition, you can see how deep you can go on one breath. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Bajans, as I say, we like our fish, so a lot of Bajans will free dive for their fish, spear fishing, whatever. But for me, I mean, even this morning, my dad said, you know, we need to go free diving. We need to, we need to grab our gear and go free, because it's just fun. Um, always have a buddy with you, so my dad is always with me. I free dive, we see who goes the deepest. I always win. Just making <laughs> that clear. And your lung capacity, how long can you be under there without coming back up? The longest I've held my breath, period, static, not moving, is three minutes. And that, that sounds like a lot, but there are women there who beat me. Like, they went up to six, seven minutes. What? Like, they're different. I just said three minutes was, like, enough to pass. So I said three minutes and one second, I came up. But no, there are people that are ridiculous. They can hold their breath a lot longer than that. So we are learning about, you know, the beauty, about spending time under the water. But all jokes aside, the mm. coral is in danger. Yes. And you all are working to restore it we try all right we when we come matt let's talk about that restoration of course and how we as john public could get involved okay. both from terra firma and also in the water when we come back <laughs> Chatting with Ajani Miller from Barbados Blue, and Ajani is a diving instructor, he's a free diver, he's also a boat captain, and today we're taking a look at coral and the marine life around our island, and part of what he does is restoration. So how do you go about that? I know in the chat on the trip with Gail, mm -hmm. you did mention these A-frames mm -hmm. and so on, but where is the coral located around Barbados? Okay, in terms of coral, coral is located all around Barbados. So, I mean, like we dive primarily south coast from Hilton all the way up to past Oysons. I mean, you're open to find reef all over. But in terms of coral restoration, what, what the aim is, you take ecologically beneficial branching coral reefs that are in um, that have a high chance that are endangered, right? And the A-frames, the A-frames are just literal A-frames made out of steel with crossbars. So we take the coral from, we, do, we normally use Folkestone. So we started with Folkestone and we take what we call staghorn coral, right? So staghorn coral is beautifully yeah. branching coral. Beautiful. Um, I mean, if, if you have a nice, healthy branching reef, I mean, they protect your shorelines, fish all over it, and tiny fish swimming around it. But they are susceptible to climate change, um, to water temperature changes, to, I mean, they break like that if you touch it, if you wow. really hit it. So we take those fragments, we put them on the A-frame, and we put them on the A-frame, we let them stay there for a couple of months, within six to 12 months, we come back. What do you see? To see its difference in growth. No, so but what do you see? How, do, how you know, it looks bigger, or yeah. it has branches? It will, it will get longer, it gets longer. Cause, so it depends on the piece you take, so they branch out a little bit more, uh -huh. they grow, and once they grow to a, suffic a sufficient size, you take that piece and you plant it back on the reef. Wow. So our goal is recently what we did is, so Folkestone, just so you know, all the staghorn coral on Folkestone 
originated when they did the deep water harbor. Mm -hmm. So the marine biologists went down and they thought it would just be, okay, we're doing this for formality. The water's dark, it's disgusting. There's nothing down there to see. They went down there and they found a bunch of branching um, stag on coral. And it was because simply there's no human interaction. No fishermen are out there. There's nobody killing anything. So they have a chance to thrive. And right. it was how were they able to live in water in this condition. Okay. But they took those because the whole harbor was being built, took those branches, transfer them to Folkestone. And now if you go to Folkestone, you will just see a lot of, lot of coral, um, stalcorn coral. And it's also protected as and well. It's protected. So that so area is protected. A big part of Barbados' problem with, the mar with um, coral and with protecting the coral and the marine life is we don't have a lot of marine parks, mm. which I've been told is starting to change. We, there's a vow to make more marine parks and to make more of the coastline of Barbados protected. Mm -hmm. But right now we have less than 1% of our shorelines are, are less than 1% of our reefs are protected. My goodness. So we're trying to get that. So in right your, sorry, no, no, no. in your trip with Gail, you did mention, I think it was about four wrecks mm -hmm. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you, I didn't hear the staff from Nikita, did I? No, and that's on the West Coast. Okay, yeah. and the, you were, well, you traveled with the team that sunk the Trident. I was there, yeah. It was a big, it was, that was a big thing. So different dive shops came yeah. out on their boats and I was just on, happened, I was happened to be on the boat with some of the people that helped. Right. Put the train in there. Have you been back? Oh, of course. Several what times. Does it look, what does it look like now? I mean, it's not been down there hundreds of years, well, so no. there's not coral. All, no. But I mean, the changes, I mean, yeah, the, the, it's, it still maintains its shape because it's recent. So people like to take pictures. There's several pictures of people holding onto the guns that were mm -hmm. put on front. Um, no, it's a, we go there. I think that's our, one of our more popular wreck dives. Because it's just deep yes. enough that open water is low level. The lower level divers can enjoy it. And it's right outside the marine park. So we can just swim into the marine park. And we go straight from the newest shipwreck in the, bar, in the country to the oldest one. Yes. That was sunk in World War One. Right. Which was the Cornwallis? The, um, the Berwyn. The Berwyn. Yes, Berwyn. Yeah, the Berwyn. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So I find the reef so beautiful with the fish of many colors uh -huh. is it true because you know sometimes you hear these stories but that these fish actually like burp out sand or whatever and that's what helps our <laughs> beaches no, no seriously people, no, 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 be, yeah. it's so, funny what you hear sometimes so parrot fish parrot fish parrot that's fish it poop out sand so this a lot i can't I remember the burp, exact figure i can't remember okay. the exact figure but they eat the algae and they poop out sand, sea, sl um, sea cucumbers. You see like a trail of poop that is just sand. So I think, I can't remember how much it is. And we kill these things, yeah. so no wonder our So no, it hurts me to see, because I, I, I see two days ago, I, it, it, there's a fine line, because you don't want to take away someone's livelihood, mm -hmm. but you also want to protect the reef. So you see fishermen go out there and they'll kill like parrot fish, and I'll be like, oh, it was just so, it's just, you have to hold in how upset they, you are. They, they don't, might not know They might not though. know. But I mean, yes, no, they might, they won't know. So we need then education. Education. Um, especially the little ones, because they love to know more than their parents. Yes, so they do. They will tell and they all parents. think they do anyway, so. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But they don't know how to swim a lot of them. No. Which comes to even Dye Fest in August, um, where we have a, we're, we're trying to get over 100, 100 kids, local kids, to come learn to dive. So over the years, I know COVID interrupted it. But when we had Dive Fest, we'd get 100 kids. There are pictures all over us in Hilton Pool and outside in the ocean teaching kids to swim. And like you would see, we give them shirts. So they have their shirts and they go out there and they'll come back and they'll say, yeah, I learned to swim here. I came here to swim. And I remember you already tall. And then, yeah. <laughs> do they <laughs> so, continue? Yeah, I hope they do. I, I can't control after they leave, but I think it, it, you can see a lot of them like, I want to do this. I want to. I wanna. How, how, how can you be a part, say, with perhaps the Ministry of Education to look, and I mean you, your organization, not you, you mm -hmm. necessarily, um, perhaps look at organizing, you know, not only dive camps, but mm. perhaps swim camps. And, Those have been around for, there are swimming camps. For, um, I know, but I mean specific ones that you actually go and see, even if it's snorkeling, mm -hmm. just to look at what else is part of Barbados. I, I can't bring up this stuff without bringing up like Michael Young, who many may know, but he has done, you know him? Yes. Like he's, he does, he's many times have done camps doing just that. 
So you'll borrow Brilliant. one of another dive shop's boat and they'll take them and I know kids have been. And some of those kids have stayed around there, still working there and come on the boat with them. So I can't, it's been done. And there are people who are doing it, um, such as him. And he's been doing it for years very well. And he's even the one or helping us organize the one coming up in August right. this year. So I mean, I can't say it without mentioning his name. Okay. Well, the Coastal Zone Management Unit has been doing tremendous work mm -hmm. um, in trying to to not only make us aware mm -hmm. of the importance of coral preservation, mm -hmm. but also beach erosion and how mm -hmm. what we do on a daily basis can affect the no. ocean. Yeah. Let me just let me just share this with you. There is a treasure below the surface of the water surrounding Barbados. It is home to many species of marine life, protects our shorelines, provides us with food, and is an attraction for visitors to the island. This treasure is the coral reef, and for all that the reefs do for us, we should be protecting them. However, Studies have shown that the reefs are under serious threat due to land-based pollution that makes its way to the ocean. A study by the Coastal Zone Management Unit found that contaminants such as nitrates in wastewater and groundwater had a significant negative impact on the coral reefs. With Barbados having approximately 17% coral cover, it is expected that should the level of nitrates in the water and the level of pollution not decrease, our coral reefs will be destroyed. Overfishing also poses a threat as this disrupts the ecosystem of the reef. The fish depend on the reefs for shelter and help to clean algae from the reef, therefore preventing overgrowth that can cause the reef to die. The story of coral reef decline tells the perfect tale of how connected everything in the world is. The things we do on land have an enormous effect on what happens in the ocean around us, which in turn comes back to affect us once again on land. Coral reefs reduce the intensity of waves as they approach our shores, especially during storms when the waves get more active due to the high winds. This helps to protect our beaches and coastal properties. To destroy the reefs will mean an increase in coastal erosion and the disappearance of one of the few natural resources that we have grown to be so proud of. To make this dream of stronger and healthier coral reefs a reality, we must all do our part. For example, we can reduce our use of strong fertilizers and pesticides and not pollute our environment, whether in the sea or on land. This way, we can avoid more damage to the reefs as well as help to reduce coastal erosion. Whether you are a resource manager, a beachgoer, a first-time visitor, or a local business owner, you can safeguard our treasure by keeping a close eye on our coasts, ensuring that Barbados remains bountiful for years to come. So now you know. Now you know what we do impacts what happens there in the ocean, the nitrates in the water, what we dispose of things, our garbage, all of that. So a word to the wise is sufficient, I certainly hope. Ajani, yes. final words at you. Um, what do you want us to take away? What do you want to see? What do you hope will happen? I hope you have an appreciation for the... I mean, Barbados is made of coral. We're <laughs> made of limestone. So, I mean, as beautiful as Barbados is on land, we all know our main income is tourism. Tourists come here to see the land, yes, but they also want to see something in the water. And there has to be something in the water to see. So, I hope Bajans, Barbadians, all my people appreciate what's under there. Even if, And I hope you even come to learn to swim, come to learn to dive. A lot of people don't even know the shipwrecks exist 50 feet from cabinet building. They don't know that's there. And I mean, I brought friends on the boat when I was in secondary school. I said, come, let's go on the boat. And you're like, I didn't know this was here. So I mean, I want people to open their eyes and be willing to go in the water. I know the saying, the seeing got in the back door. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, come, come, come see what you're missing. And I promise you, you will have a good time. And yeah, that's, that's my word. Yeah. I always like to say the marine life is part of Barbados too. There are it the is. other Barbadians. 
So we got to learn to take care of them. Thank you so much, Ajani, You're for very joining welcome. us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us today. I certainly hope that you've learned a lot. I know I certainly have. And looking forward to being with you again next week. Take care.